got a simple little wet floor I'm going to do for you today. This is the Hoskins. It is out of Ray Bergman's book, Trout. Very simple wet fly with three materials to it. However, being an all floss body with no rib, it can be kind of difficult. So there's a little trick and technique that I'll show you when I tie the fly. But that is the Hoskins. I'll go ahead and get started. start the Hoskins with my hook and the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 in a size 6. I'll go ahead and debarb this. I've mentioned in a number of videos that these wet flies usually are tied on a smaller size hook, usually say 10s and 12s. I generally like to tie them on a little bit bigger. I'm going for more warm water species, but also, if you're learning a new fly, if there's uh, new techniques or new things that you're learning, try tying it on a bigger hook because then you remove the factors of having to deal with small materials on a small hook to actually learn the material, learn the fly, and get it down, and then you can reduce the size. Just a little tip. For thread, I'm going to use a Danville 6 aught in white. To start out, there is a floss body of yellow floss on this, and I don't want to darken it up. I've already waxed my thread. I'm going to attach my thread and advance it down to the end of the shank. The body of the Hoskins is a yellow floss. I'm using a Danville four strand rayon in yellow. Now I'm going to use all four strands, but I'm actually tying in five strands. There's an extra strand in here, and the reason is, is that the floss on this, I have to lock it down. And what I mean by that is, if you look in some of the other videos I've done on these wet flies where they have a, a tip or a tag of floss in the back, you leave one strand out as kind of a security measure. That's what this little strand is going to be right here. This is going to be my security. And the reason is, is that if you don't, when the floss, you wrap it on the hook shank, it tends to want to advance down the bend of the hook. See, I, I tied one intentionally without so that you could see, even though you tighten up the floss and and wrap it in real tight this especially as it gets touched and it brushes things this floss is just going to keep creeping down the bend of the hook so what we're going to do is employ kind of the same technique when we're tying in a tag or a tip of floss but we're going to do it to the actual uh, floss body now once I get all five strands in, I'm going to advance my thread forward to just about the point of the hook. This is going to give me roughly the equivalent of a tag or a tip on the back here. I'm going to take four strands here. I'm going to try and kind of separate out. You'll notice I have them also all tied on top of the hook shank. I'm going to get that one strand out the back. I'm going to take these four strands and I'm going to start to advance them around. I'm going to get a couple of wraps in here like this that kind of give me the back end of the body. Now I'm going to take my hackle pliers and I'm going to attach it to that floss. It's going to add some weight and stability to that floss so it does not uh, unravel or twist up or anything. The toughest part about this procedure is keeping your bobbin and the floss from intertwining and wrapping around each other. Then take that 
one remaining strand of floss and I'm going to wrap it over the top. And I'm going to get one nice securing wrap on that around the top. And another and another to secure that in. And then I'll clip away the excess. And now I can advance my thread up the body just like I normally would, collecting all of that floss to the hook shank so it's nice and smooth for the rest of the body. Now I can come back to my floss. Sometimes I'll back this off just half a wrap to try and make certain if it's spread out at all, I get it all collected back together. And now I will simply advance the floss all the way up the body. And you should be able to see the back end of that just has that one little strand that helps to secure it in place and it keeps the body from advancing down the bend of the hook. change over to my black thread. I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black to finish the ply off. I've also already waxed this thread. As I said, this ply is pretty straightforward. Three materials, the body, wing, and a, a collared hackle. That floss back here at the back is probably about the only thing that's kind of, I don't want to say intricate, but just a little tricky. But it's uh, an interesting technique to employ. So for the wing, it's just a light slate. I'm using this natural mallard wings for this. I'm trying to keep the uh, slips that I cut out, I'm trying to keep them down lower on the feather where they're going to be a lighter color and not, not real dark. I get my two slips together, getting the tips all evened up, and then I'll check the width of the body. These are just a hair wide. Because I have no tail on this, I want to have the end of the wings back the same distance as the bend of the hook. You could go a little bit more if you want, but generally, if I had a tail, say the tail would be from back here to about here, halfway down the tail would be right at the bend of the hook. So I'm keeping them about the same length as any other matched wings on a wet fly. Now going to smooth this area here off because this is where we will tie in our hackle for our collar. I'm just using a gray hen for this. The recipe just calls for a gray hackle. I'm going to tie this in by the tip. The easiest way to do that is take your hackle pliers, attach it to the very tip, and then I can. Stroke these barbs back. Right where I've separated those, I'll get two thread wraps in right here, and then I'll fold that tip back. A couple more thread wraps and advance my thread down to the eye of the hook. I can then take that little tip section right here and just pop that off. I can grab it. 
Take my hackle. I'm going to get three to four wraps in here. It just depends on how thick you want the collar to be, how thick the feather is that you have. I generally get about four wraps out of each of these hackles. They end up just right behind the eye of the hook. One wrap to secure that in. I'll sweep all this back and start wrapping in behind the eye of the hook. Moving backwards, get about half that head done, and I can clip away the rest of this feather. If Sometimes they'll just snap off. That's a little bit thick down on that rachis, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And then I'll advance my thread back a little bit more to finish up creating the head. All nice and neat. Flatten my thread, and I'll put in my whip finish, some head cement, and a little bit of black lacquer on this to brighten up the head a little bit. And our Hoskins will be done. Well, my wings separated a little bit down there. Keep in mind when you're fishing this, this wing is not going to be looking this good. And it's not going to stay together that well. You don't want it to. You want it to kind of flow in the water and move around. But at the same time at the vise, we want it to look kind of nice. I got just a little bit of thread right there, I think. You know, the head cement on both sides there. And that will secure the head on the fly. And then I'll get some black lacquer on this in just a minute to finish it up. So there's the Hoskins. Nice little wet fly, uncomplicated, with the exception of that floss body. And you don't have to. If you can maybe put a twist in that floss or something to start it, if that's what you want to do, that will help also keep it from advancing down the bend of the hook, but that's a little safety measure if you want to have the fly just be uh, stay a little more intact. So that's the Hoskins. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.